is I'm looking at my different energy. And of course, what is that different energy tell me? That it tell me the kinetic energy of the photo electron waves that I need to consider for the interference effect that I have. So what you're looking for then is that you, you fit this background, you cut out, you eliminate the background because that's the atomic class we are not interested in. We understand how to calculate this, so we don't care. Uh, then you just plot your chi curve. So this is not as a chi curve, it's the auxiliary structure that you have like this. Okay? Um, and then you can say, okay, uh, there are, uh, so E naught is the ionization potential, which is here the ionization edge, uh, which is what? Which is, uh, if you want to look at the, uh, the, the atom, right? Look at my orbital energy diagram here. Uh, it's the binding energy of these atoms. Essentially, these are binding energy of these energy levels, each of these, right? So E naught exactly correspond to the binding energy. Um, well, uh, what is this? Uh, so there are two parts. There's this uh, phase part. You notice the phase part depends on the uh, interatomic radius, the difference between uh, between your uh, material, right? The, the separation between the material, and then it depends also on this uh, uh, this amplitude uh, depends if this p exponential factor depends on several things. Depends on the coordination numbers. Um, and uh, so let me show you this one a little bit better. So let me break out in here. So, so I rewrite my chi curve like this. And rewrite my, uh, my uh, similar to this, right? Rewrite this uh, single scaring field like this. And A can be written down into four terms. You don't have to memorize these things. I, I just want to there are four terms in here, and one of the terms, okay, so A depends, is a P exponential factor, because that controls how big this amplitude is of this chi curve, right? Uh, and uh, the most important thing is that it depends on N sub I, and N sub I is the coordination number, it's the number of nearest neighbor scattered around. So if you have uh, absorption of photon, that's the, the emitter, because once you absorb the photon, it emits photoelectron waves, uh, and then this photoelectron wave bound off the neighbor, and those are the neighbor scattered that we are looking at. Uh, and, and they are depending on uh, the background cross-section, uh, which is this guy here, and then it depends on something called the bywater factors, which re related the temperature of the material. Don't worry about these, uh, these things. Uh, you will hear about this if you are interested in this kind of scaling theory. The bywater theory, the bywater, are uh, the people who come up with a way to uh, account for the thermal motion of the atom inside the material. And that affects the amplitude because it affects, effectively the vibration effects. And then you finally, you have a damping effect um, or in elastic mean p part, remember this lambda that we're talking about, uh, because clearly if you go deeper and deeper in the material, it has to deal with how thick the material is. So that's the physical property effect related to thickness. So it's lambda coming into here uh, is the last term that affects your amplitude of these materials. So you're doing scaling theory there. There is a standard program to account for all this. You just have to enter temperature and, and divide so-called divide water factors, your mean p path, things like that. And then you generate a number, and this number will depend on, uh, will, will then allow you to figure out, back figure out what is this n, which is what you have to, the, the coordination number. So why is this so, uh, from the perspective of nano material, uh, why is this so important? Well, it is important because, uh, because if you're looking at uh, catalysis, let's say nano catalyst, you want to know uh, what is the na nearest neighbor, the grain in between material, how small they are when you make a new material, new catalyst, right? Uh, you like to know immediately what kind of how many neighbor, nearest neighbor, does a particular um, atom that you have in your material? So it helps you 
probably you'd have figured out the stuff you've got on geometry of your uh, material that you've got. And it's a very simple technique uh, to use. So typically, so that's that's it. So you have uh, you have this amplitude, and then you have uh, you have this uh, k factor, which depends on the spare energy that you've got of h mu minus the absorption edge. And this k factor, this wave vector times r, r is the radius, right? Uh, r is the radial distance uh, from the j scale. It's the interatomic spacing, if you like, uh, from the scale. Right? Um, can work out uh, because that will control the phase. This controls how uh, how your wiggle is spreading out, the frequency of your wiggle, the semi frequency of your of, of your wiggle that's spreading out, and A controls the intensity height of the wiggle. Okay. So two things that I I want to impress on you. One is that the intensity depends on the coordination of them, and the uh, the periodicity, how this spread out, the, 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 so, uh, uh, this uh, wiggle going, uh, the cycling of this wiggle depends on the interatomic separation between your emitter and the, and the scatter that you have. Now, for uh, as a simple way of mathematics, uh, once you got a wiggle like this, uh, physicists can, can easily find out what is the most probable uh, wiggle that, what, what kind of interatomic distance you would have in order to generate a pattern like this. All that you have to do is to do a Fourier transform. In fact, a, a, a Fourier transform of this uh, spacing. Uh, and when they do a Fourier transform of this, uh, this uh, spectrum, what, you can think of this as a powder, power spectrum, right? Because whenever you go power spectrum, you can get back to frequency domain. So, so you can either think of it as a frequency domain or a power spectrum, depending on how you treat things. So you convert this by a Fourier transform, right? So go from here to here, you do a FT, Fourier transform. And what you find is that you find P. So you have photon energy, which is K space, right? This is this, the, the wave vector space, uh, which is inverse distance. Right? You do a Fourier transfer, you get distance back. So you get R back. Okay? That's the interatomic distance, what you got. And it's very beautiful, because once you got that, you find, oh, there's one big peak here. Um, that must be the nearest neighbor peak, because that's the most intense one. And then you have a little other peak, this one and this one. That could be the second nearest neighbor or the third nearest neighbor. Okay? So it's a very simple treatment, even though the theory is a little bit Complex. Uh, you people know how to do. It's just a little program to do for a transform from here to here, and immediately you just pick out the distance. Immediately you can know what is the nearest nearest neighbor uh, separation, and that's why uh, a lot of catalysis people love this technique, particular for small uh, material, uh, nano catalysts. Remember catalysts? They are talking about five to uh, under five nanometers. Uh, particle size that they have. And inside, they can find out how the offside, uh, one offside material from the other uh, neighbor, what is the separation that you have. Okay, so that's a, a simple way to find the nearest neighbor. So now let me talk about this. So that's it. So that's uh, exact. So, so you can get structural information by just doing that.